subtracting rational numbers. Uh, the target today is simply I can add and subtract rational numbers. Uh, if you recall, rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction. Okay, so any decimal or fraction that we have, uh, we're going to go ahead and call those rational numbers. So to start, we're going to work with decimals. Okay, with decimals, the, the big key here is that we want to stack the decimal point. So if we're going to use our vertical layout method, you know, that's kind of the number one way that, that we will add and subtract decimals by hand anyways. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stack that decimal point and then add it up like we would. So 2.48, make sure this one's kind of easy because there's the same number of digits in each number. But uh, make sure that decimal point is over the other decimal point, And then you can just add them straight, straight down. 8 plus 4 is 12. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8, and 2 plus 5 is 7. So a lot of times I'll rewrite it because, again, it gets kind of ugly when I use the vertical layout. Uh, they tend to spread apart a little bit. Uh, so the next one, this is a really important one for stacking the decimal point, uh, 5.748, and we have 3.2. Instead of writing it over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to write it over here so that the decimal point is over the other decimal point. They're lined up. Okay. Uh, if you want to, you can fill in the zeros here. It doesn't really matter in this case because, uh, because 8 plus 0 is still 8. 4 plus 0 is 4. Now we get to numbers. 7 plus 2 is 9. And we have 5 plus 3 is 8. So we get 8.9. For eight as our answer. On the next couple, we're subtracting. Okay, same idea with subtracting. We want to stack that decimal. Uh, Seven point two five four and three point one four. You can throw that extra zero on there if you feel weird about it. Uh, but four minus zero is four. Five minus four is one. Two minus one is one and 7 minus 3 is 4. Okay, when we're, when we're subtracting a smaller number from a bigger number, we will get a positive. Okay, if it was the other way around, it would give us a negative. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Uh, most of the time when I'm dealing with adding and subtracting decimals, just in the, just in the interest of time, I'm going to use a calculator. Okay, so I'll just grab a calculator and just type it in how it says. So 15.371 minus 8.3158, and hit enter, and it gives me my answer, uh, 7.0552. Sometimes it may be helpful to, maybe if you think you can do the problem by hand, do it by hand, and then check your work with a calculator. Uh, but I, I'm really fine with just answering straight, uh, straight with a calculator for these. So I'm going to add that to the big key here is use a calculator. All right, so use a calculator when we're working with decimals. It makes it quicker and easier. The big thing that uh, that I want us to maintain throughout this whole section is if I start with a, uh, with a decimal, I want to answer with a decimal. If I start with a fraction, I want to end with a fraction. And if I start with a mixed number, end with a mixed number. Uh, go ahead and pause the video. You can try the four below. and go, So go ahead and pause it and try those. Go. All right, welcome back. Hopefully uh, you punch those ones into a calculator and you should have gotten 83.83. .83. Zero point two zero zero six, 
11.928 and 79.026. One thing I want to point, point out here is anytime I have a zero in the whole number spot, I will always write that zero because a lot of times if I don't, I will forget that there's a decimal point and I might think that that number is 2006 instead of 0 0.2006. Write that zero. It makes life a lot easier. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about fractions. Now, fractions are definitely a spot where I do all the adding and subtracting by hand, and I expect that you can do that as well because it takes too much time and too many different keys on a calculator in order to uh, in order to make that happen. But with fractions, the big key is that I want a common denominator. And when I get a common denominator, I want to add or subtract just the tops or the numerators. Okay, I want to add or subtract the numerators straight across. And then if I can, I'll put that right here, then reduce. Oop, reduce. So reduce the fraction if you can. Uh, I expect fractions to be in lowest terms. Uh, it, it's just a prettier way to look at problems. And uh, again, if, if we if we get a number that would be over one, I want that to be a mixed number. Uh, between mixed numbers and fractions, there's not a big difference, but we'll talk a little bit about how to turn a uh, improper fraction into a mixed number. So for this one here, we have 5, 6 plus 5, 6. The beauty is we have common denominators already at the top, straight across. 10, keep the denominator the same. 5 plus 5 is 10, keep the denominator the same. I can reduce that. I know it's improper. I'm going to turn it into a mixed number in a second. But uh, I'm going to reduce that, divide both those by 2, and I get 5 thirds. Okay. How many times do, does 3 go into 5? Well, it goes into it once. And there's two left over, so one and two-thirds will be my final answer there. In this next one, I have to multiply the first fraction by a specific number in order to get common denominators. So I'm going to multiply that first fraction. And, you know, I kind of ask myself, what do I multiply a two by to get eight? Well, I multiply it by four. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And I'll rewrite what my new problem is. Uh, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 5 eighths. I just left that one alone, didn't have to do anything to it. 4 plus 5 is 9, over 8. Okay, uh, how many times does 8 go into 9? It goes into it once, with 1 left over, so 1 and 1 eighth will be my answer. Alright, so next one. How do I turn 4 into 8? Well, kind of the opposite of the problem before. I'm going to multiply by 2 on the top and bottom. All right, so I'll multiply by 2. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 5 over 8. So when I go 6 minus 5, that's going to give me a 1 8. Okay, so 1 8 will be our answer on that problem. Moving over to this last one on this row. Uh, when I look at these, I can't multiply 5 by anything to get 12. I need to multiply by whole numbers. Uh, so I'm just going to go the kind of the throwing a brick through a window way. And I'm going to multiply the left side, the left fraction, by the denominator on the right side. And the right fraction by the denominator on the left side. So we're going to multiply this by 12 over 12. Multiply this by 5 over 5. Makes the problem become a little bit ugly, but 4 times 12, you can figure that out. That's 48. And 5 times 12 is 60. Minus 11 times 5 is 55. And 12 times 5 is 60. That's what we wanted 
were the same things on the bottom. So now I can just subtract those. If I go 48 minus 55, I'm subtracting a bigger number, so I'm going to get a negative, and that's actually negative 7 over 60. That's my final answer. It can't be reduced, and it's not an improper fraction. I want you now to pause the video and do these four problems down below. Pause it, and ready, set, go. All right, welcome back. We're going to do these last four problems on this side of the page as soon as we focus in here. All right, I have 3 sevenths minus, or sorry, 3 elevenths minus 7 elevenths. I have common denominators. 3 minus 7 is negative 4 over 11. We're good to go. Uh, 4 ninths and 2 thirds. I can turn 3 into 9 by multiplying by 3. So I'll get 4 ninths plus 2 times 3 is 6 over 9. Okay, I have common denominators. I'm good to go. 4 plus 6 is 10 over 9. How many times does 9 go into 10? It goes into it once with 1 left over. So 1 and 1 ninth will be my final answer there. On the next one, I need to multiply both fractions by a number because I can't turn 4 into 5. So I'm going to multiply this by the 5. 5 on top, 4 over here on the top and the bottom. 5 times 7 is 35. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20. Plus 4 times 1 is 4 over the 20. Okay. And I have 35 plus 4, and that's going to give me 39 twentieths. How many times does 20 go into 39? It goes into it once. And I have a remainder there of 19. So I have 1 and 19 twentieths. Okay. Last problem here. We have 3 halves and 7 fourths. We're subtracting. I can turn 2 into 4 by multiplying by 2. So I'll do that to the top and the bottom. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 7 fourths. Okay. 6 minus 7 is negative 1 fourth. Let's go ahead and turn to the next page. Okay, let's get a couple more problems here. Now we're going to talk about mixed numbers. Again, as soon as we focus in here. We're going to talk about mixed numbers. So the, the big key on mixed numbers is that I want to add or subtract. I want to, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room here. There's a little bit bigger of a big key. I want to add or subtract the whole number part or you might say the integer part if it's negative and then I want to add or subtract the fractions so that's kind of step one there, step two, add or subtract the fraction part, fractions, and then step three I want to simplify. So you can kind of see why we don't want to, oops, sorry. You can kind of see why we don't want to use calculators here because calculators are built in a decimal world and, and they're going to give us a decimal answer and we don't want that. We want to answer our answer in a fraction. Okay. So this first one, I want to add the integer part, 2 plus 1, and then I also have 1 fourth plus 5 sixths. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the 2 and the 1. 2 plus 1, that's pretty easy. That's 3. Okay, and then I have 1 fourth and, and 2 six or 5 six. sorry. Um, so what I want to do is I want to find a common denominator there. I'm going to multiply this by 6, that by 6, this by 4, and that by 4. I can't turn 4 into 6. So I'm going to rewrite this now. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 5 times 4 is 20 over the 24. 
All right. So I have still that three out there. We'll get to that in a second. Um, 20, 10, 20 plus 6 is 26, and 24 on the bottom. I can reduce that. Leave that 3 again. Don't lose it. Okay, I can reduce that. Both those are multiples of 2. 26 divided by 2 is 13 over 12. That will, that will kind of simplify by being an improper fraction to be 1 and 1 twelfth. Okay. We've been carrying that 6 for a while. It's getting heavy. I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to add that 3 to that 1. Okay. 3 plus 1 is 4 and 1 twelfth. That will be our final answer on that problem. A little bit of work, but it's, it's worth it to not have to change it into an improper fraction and, and really you know, make ourselves work even harder. The next one here. I have 4 plus, or 1 and 3 fourths plus 4. I'm going to add the, uh, the whole number part, 1 plus 4 plus 3 fourths. 1 plus 4 is 5 and 3 fourths. See how easy that was? That was nice. Those problems are good. Okay, now we're going to move on. Next one here. We're dealing with subtraction. Now some funny things happen, okay? Because 1 and 4 fifths is really 1 plus 4 fifths. Okay, that's how we think of it, or that's what it is. We think of it as 1 and 4 fifths. But I'm going to go 1 minus 3 to start. And then I'm going to add on this other part. So sometimes I'll put these in parentheses and put the fractions in parentheses. I have 4 fifths minus the 1 half. Okay, minus one half. Well, let's do the whole number part real quick. Uh, one minus three is negative two. And then four fifths and one half. I'm going to multiply that by two on the top and bottom. Multiply that by five on the top and bottom. I'll rewrite it. Two times four is eight. Sorry, that's a, that's a plus there. So I have 8 over 10 minus 5 over 10. So I still have my negative 2. And 8 minus 5 is 3 tenths. So we just have 3 tenths right there. Negative 2 and 3 tenths. All right, moving on. Last one here we have, we still have subtraction. I'm going to subtract the whole number part, 15 minus 3, and we have that, and then we'll add on that 1 half at the end. Okay, 15 minus 3, what's that? That's 12 and 1 half. <coughs> Pause the video, try the, uh, try the next four problems. Ready, go. All right, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you were able to get these problems done. Again, just working with the whole number part first. 4 minus 1 plus 7 eighths minus 7 tenths. Okay, that minus comes from being right there and subtracting those fractions from each other. Uh, 4 minus 1 is 3 plus 7 eighths and 7 tenths. I'm going to have to multiply that by 10 by 10 by 8 by 8. Okay, so I have 70 over 80 minus 56 over 80. Okay, and so 3 plus 70 minus 56, that's going to be, sometimes I just use a calculator to help me uh, get those numbers just right. That'll be 14 over 80. We can simplify that out. Uh, they're both multiples of 2. So I'll divide both those by 2. Um, I'm going to have 3. And 14 divided by 2 is 7 over uh, 80 divided by 2 is 40. Okay, and we have... I better box those. Okay, I like to box my answers. And when I'm fancy like that, I always miss that equal sign. A little gap there. 
Okay. Here I have a 1 minus 1 plus 3 fourths minus 1 half. Okay, 1 minus 1 is 0. I'm not even going to write that. I'm just going to leave it alone. So really I only have 3 fourths minus 1 half. Times this one by 2 on, bo on both the top and bottom. So I have 3 fourths minus 2 fourths. 3 minus 2 is 1, so I have 1 fourth as my answer. Not even a mixed number. Okay. Adding the 5 and the 3, that's going to give me 8 and 4 ninths. Very little work to be done on that one. That's awesome. Okay. Adding again 8 and 9, you can kind of skip that and just write it. 17. Now here, you've got something a little tricky going on. Okay. Common denominators are ready, so I just add the tops. 11 plus 1 is 12. 12 over 12. Okay, well, 12 over 12 is 1. Okay, now we have another whole number that we can add in to that uh, to that 17, so we leave ourselves with 18. Okay, hopefully you got that. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them, and good luck on the Mastery Challenge. One, two, fractions here before you. That's what you see now. Fractions, fractions cannot bore you. Let's go ahead now. They have... Same denominators, so we can add now. Add those, add the numerators, that's how it's done now. These two have different denominators, time for some math now. We need the same denominators, so we can add now. So we find the least common multiple. The LCM now to use as the new denominators for equivalent fractions. Three fourths here is twelve sixteenths. One eighth is the second fraction. Two sixteenths. When I add that up, it's fourteen sixteenths. But reduce it and the answer seven eighths. But reduce it and the answer seven eighths. Said if you need to do subtraction, it's done the same now. Get the same denominators like when you add now. Use that least common multiple. The LCM now, and just subtract the new numerators, reduce if needed.